See, these were the demonstrators. And see the hard hats lined up against them. You know, this brings back memories. I was born in Jamaica. I came to the United States in 1946. I grew up in Little Rock, Arkansas. At that time, we were totally segregated. We didn't interact with white people at all. When my parents moved in the Madrona District in 1938, I was five years of age. When we moved up there, uh, all of our windows were broken. Within a week or so, my dad told us to stick together, and if anyone calls you a nigger, then all of you get involved. We had career day at the school. One of the people who came was an attorney named Booker. I was highly impressed. I said at that time, that's what I want to be. Three days after I completed college, I packed everything that I owned practically and drove to Seattle to go to law school. The Northwest was an overwhelmingly predominantly white society. It had evolved into a more progressive facade, but the reality was very, very much the same. People had to be as persevering here as they did in many places in the South. In the 1960s, one of the main problems we were having in the Seattle community was housing. Don't forget, you know, open housing failed three to one. This, of course, then created segregated schools. The employment opportunities were very restricted, so that meant that it was harder. More and more African Americans were moving to Seattle, and jobs were very difficult uh, be because of discrimination. When you think about some of our founding fathers, they saw a lot, things that we probably could never imagine. That was just so much that people should not have had to march and protest for, but we did. It was sort of in that, uh, I guess, that backdrop that Lauren Miller was formed. There were very few black lawyers in Washington at that time. Only a handful in western Washington and one, the iconic Carl Maxey, in eastern Washington. Eventually, a lawyer named Jane McIver indicated to two or three of us that we ought to get together and form a law club so we can be beneficial to each other in the practice of law. We sent invitations to all the black lawyers we know. Thirteen of us formed the Lauren Miller Bar Club, as it was then called. Judge Stokes, Archie Greenlee, Lockett, uh, Ed Stone, Carl Maxey, Jack Tanner. Judge Haley, Andy Young, Gary Gaydon, Liam Howell, and myself. The reason they created a law club is because some of the larger established bar associations didn't want or permit or tolerate African Americans to become members of the associations. I go back and look at the original documents that was, in many ways, the Declaration of Independence for black lawyers in the city. They were heroes. These were people that I looked at and said, I want to be like him. I want to be like her. Our primary purpose when we formed was to be a civil rights type organization. Lauren Miller was a lawyer in California who was uh, doing a lot of work in civil rights at that time. We were involved in trying to help the blacks here in Seattle and elsewhere. We had demonstrations to get blacks in the construction industry and the demonstrators were arrested. Charles O'Carroll wanted million dollar bail and nonsense. Fortunately, the judges were realistic and gave everybody PR. Many of the students of color at the University of Washington felt as if we were not supposed to be there. They were marginalizing people, and the Lauren Miller Bar Association was the group that was able to come to our quote-unquote rescue. Having that 
as a resource from the community meant a lot to those of us who were there. Because we were such an effective association, candidates for office sought of endorsement. A lot of these guys weren't so uh, fair and liberal until the thought that they might be attacked by the Laura Miller uh, Bar Association. These black lawyers not only provided very much needed legal representation and political activism, but at that time they were a source of great pride and a promise of hope for the future for black people in the state. The story of the founders helped really explain why Lauren Miller Barr is vital to young lawyers and to the community. When I first had the opportunity to go to a Lauren Miller meeting, I felt I had come home. I'm a little Iowa girl from a country town where people had always said, you're not going to be X, Y by their actions. It gives me the strength to continue the fight. Our founders, when they started the organization, fought for us to have a seat at the table. The Lauren Miller Bar Association is still relevant today because there are a lot of barriers that young attorneys, attorneys of color, face. I am extremely proud of the young lawyers. I never really an anticipated or thought that we would be at this stage, but there are still problems that exist in this community. Challenges are even greater today than perhaps in some ways some of the ones that we had to endure. The institutions are being tested in a way that they haven't been tested in a very long time, if ever. You always have to push. The fight is not over yet because the education of people is, is a problem. There's still a need for young lawyers to be committed to the struggle, to keep on fighting. I urge all young black lawyers to become members of Lauren Miller. My hope for the organization is for us as a body not to forget our past and honoring and paying our dues and respect to our founders and those who have made all these opportunities possible. Happy birthday, Lauren Miller Bar Association. Yes, happy birthday instead of happy anniversary because this is a momentous occasion. Sincere congratulations on this iconic 50th anniversary. Congratulations, Lauren Miller Barr founders. And I would like to say from the deepest part of my soul, thank you for all the sacrifices you have made for us to be here tonight and for accomplishing so much for so many. I am glad that some of us have survived to see the 50th anniversary. It's uh, been a good run, and I hope that the association will continue for another 50 years or more. Remember, it is necessary to continue to stay involved. All of this we can build on as we move into the next 50 years, saying and reminding people that we are determined to make the justice system just and we're determined to hold those people accountable who say that they are, in fact, the keepers of truth and justice in this society. Congratulations to our phenomenal members, executive board members, past presidents and founders for making this the 50th year anniversary of us as an organization. I look forward to carrying on our legacy. I'd like to say to each of you, when one of us rises, we all rise. And that is, for me, the legacy of Lauren Miller Bar Association.